In this video, I'm going to introduce tree adjoining grammar. And in order to introduce this, I want to start out with an example so we can take a look at how this might apply to our syntactic theories in linguistics. So let's focus on this tree in the center here, A, B, C, D, E with a terminal D. And what you'll notice right away is that we have two missing terminals. We don't have a terminal on B and we don't have a terminal on E. Instead, they have these down arrows beside them. And this signals that these are substitution sites, meaning that we can substitute another tree that starts with a capital B here or a non-terminal E down here into this tree. So let's do just that. Let's take this B tree on the left and substitute it in to the B substitution site in our main tree. And similarly with this E over here, we can do another substitution. And we just draw these with arrows. So in other words, this B is going to go into this B in the substitution site. And then what happens is we can put it directly in. So now we have a tree where we have AB and it goes to a terminal B. Similarly, if we do it with the E on the right side, we can substitute it in. And now suddenly we have a filled tree. So that's one operation which is substitution. I'm going to go over this more formally in just a moment, but there's another operation which is very important. So on the right side we have a tree with a C, an F, a terminal F, and another C. In other words, we have a root and footnote C that are both the same. So we can call this uh, CR for root and CF for foot if we want, but the point is that these are both the same. So what we can do is we can take this C and we can kind of shove it in to this C here. So what's going to happen here is we're essentially going to pull apart the tree at C, insert the second tree, and then put it back together. So what's that going to look like? Well, I can actually draw this. So I'm going to take this C right here. I'm going to move it down and then I'm going to insert the tree on the right and I'm just going to rewrite it. So we'll have something like this. And of course C star. I'm not going to include the star because we've already substituted in, but this star lets us know that this is a tree that can be adjoined. So that was the operation adjoining. So now we've used up all of our trees and we have produced a derived tree. So this is a derived tree. So we started off with just the red tree with substitution sites on B and E. There was nothing on C. We substituted in the trees for B and E and we adjoined the tree on C. So tree adjoining grammar is a little bit more powerful than context free and about the same power as a context sensitive grammar. So tag is a five tuple consisting of sigma, n, i, a, and s. Sigma is a set of terminal symbols. We've seen this before and is a set of non-terminal symbols. What's new are the set i of initial trees and set a of auxiliary trees. So initial trees are trees that either have the substitution nodes or maybe they don't have any substitution nodes at all. Maybe they're the things we stick in to the other trees and auxiliary trees are meant for adjoining. So with auxiliary trees, we usually adjoin them into other trees. So in other words, that CCF tree we saw earlier is an auxiliary tree. Everything else was an initial tree. Then we have S in M, which is a distinguished non-terminal. We don't really need to worry too much about the formal definition here. Uh, what I really want to show are the operations. So initial trees and auxiliary trees. Let's take a look at what they look like. So an initial tree, which we usually abbreviate with alphas, so alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, so on and so forth, is just a tree where the root is an x, and then down here on the bottom there will be some terminals. So uh, like we saw before, it could be a tree that looks like this, where there's a and b, and these are both substitution sites, that's fine. We might even just have a tree where there are no substitution sites and they're just already filled in. Auxiliary trees look a little bit different. So they have a root and a foot and they always match. 
and usually we symbolize the bottom one with a star to realize it's an auxiliary tree. And with auxiliary trees, that means we can essentially insert it into another tree. And we'll always call these beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, so on and so forth. So alphas for initial trees, betas for auxiliary trees. Now let's take a look at this, these two operations. So substitution. We have x in alpha 1, and it has y as a substitution site on the bottom. So if we have alpha 2, another initial tree, with y as the root of this initial tree, then we can substitute it into this position. And we draw it with an arrow, and then our end result is that we have the y tree substituted in, and essentially it is now in that position. So a lot of these diagrams are going to look like really terrible Christmas trees. Okay, but on the right side, so what we've done is we've taken this Y tree and we shoved it into that position. So in other words, we put alpha 2 into alpha 1. So in order to take a look at the semantics of these things, we have derivation trees that tells us what we did in order to make the final result. So we started out with alpha 1, which is our main initial tree, and then we inserted alpha 2. So we can just draw a line and say, okay, alpha 2 went into alpha 1. That substitution, it's a pretty basic notion. A junction or adjoining is a little bit more challenging to understand at first. So here we have alpha 1, an initial tree. Y is, of course, the root. And then we have x somewhere in the middle of the tree. Then we have an auxiliary tree, beta 1, where x is the root and x is the foot. So what we can do with these auxiliary trees is do the adjoining operation where we take this x and we shove it into an x in another tree. So what will happen here is, well, essentially we're going to pull this x out in alpha 1. We're going to put in x x bar in its place, or x star in its place, and then the original tree will appear below it. So essentially, we pulled out the x within our alpha 1 tree, we shoved in our auxiliary tree where it was, and then we attached the original x back to the bottom where the footnote is. And the derivation tree, much like the previous one, Again, because we adjoined into alpha 1, we adjoined beta 1 into alpha 1, we just say that, okay, beta 1 went into alpha 1. And of course, I mean, this, this seems pretty straightforward. We usually just put them right into it. So there might be some cases where you have two auxiliary trees joining into alpha 1, and then maybe you also have another auxiliary tree joining into an auxiliary tree, and then things can get a little bit more complicated in the derivation trees. But for the most part, they're, they're pretty straightforward. So the first thing I want to say is that tree adjoining grammar is a formalism, and linguistics adapts that formalism in order to explain syntax, at least some linguists do. So the important part is this is a tree adjoining grammar, which is the formalism, but linguists adopt it to explain syntax. So tree adjoining grammar is not a linguistic theory, it is a grammar theory, or a theory of grammar, completely separate from linguistics. Okay, so lexicalized tree adjoining grammar, we say with this that each tree has exactly one lexical anchor. So all initial trees and auxiliary trees must have one lexical anchor. So on the left tree here, this is a tree for eight. And there's two things to note. One, eight. There's only one word in this tree, which is all we want. But in our tree, we also want room for all of its arguments. So whether it be theta criterion, or just the fact that 8 is transitive, so it needs two arguments, that means that we have a slot for the dp object and a slot for the dp subject. So this is a fine initial tree for a lexicalized tree adjoining grammar. And the second example, I have eat, and then I have this 2 here. But this 2 is an infinitive 2. It is a functional word, so it's a functional head, essentially. So therefore, this tree still only has one lexical anchor, 
the lexical anchor is eat, but it can have other functional heads in there as well. So because two is functional, we allow it. And then to accompany this, because you might be saying, well, I can't just insert two DPs, so James to eat broccoli doesn't make sense. I've also included the auxiliary tree seams, in which case we can substitute it into this part here, and then we get the order DP seems to eat another DP. And then we can insert DPs in order to get a correct sentence in English. So I'll do one example with this just to show off the theory. So here is alpha Mary, so an initial tree for the name Mary. We have an initial tree alpha 8, and this is the verb 8. I'm not using TPs here, but we could use TPs. The linguistic theory can be as simple or as complex as you want. I have an initial tree alpha brock for broccoli, much like the tree for Mary. And then I have beta quickly. Uh, I guess with this, it doesn't make sense to call broccoli a determiner, so I can cheat there. And then for auxiliary tree alpha quickly, or sorry, beta quickly, where we have an adverb phrase with a VP root and a VP foot. So essentially it would adjoin into this VP here. So let's actually make a good syntactic tree using these initial trees and auxiliary trees. So first of all, I wanna say Mary ate broccoli or Mary quickly ate broccoli. So let's put Mary into the subject position. So we simply substitute it in so I'm actually just going to copy and paste these, just to kind of show the substitution there. So there's the substitution of Mary. And uh, I'm just going to erase the alpha Mary tree up top and these labels. So for the derivation tree so far, we can say we have alpha 8. And then we just substituted in alpha Mary into the 8 tree. Okay, now we're going to put broccoli in for the, for the object position. So let's get rid of that substitution site, put in broccoli by substitution. And now we can say that we put alpha broccoli into the eight tree. And now we want to adjoin quickly. So if we can remember how a junction works, let's bring this up a little bit. We're going to check to see which nodes we can substitute it in. So here we can substitute it in or sorry, adjoin it in the VPs. So what we'll do is we'll break up this VP. Gonna bring it down a little bit there. Then we'll get rid of this. And essentially what we'll do here is we're going to adjoin this. So we're gonna copy this tree right into the center here. So this isn't fitting perfectly, uh, but I can adjust this. So if we do some adjustments, now things look a little bit better and that was the beta quickly and we put it into the alpha 8 tree so we have beta quickly so on the left side we have the derivation tree and on the right side we have the final syntax tree for Mary quickly ate broccoli so again based on your syntactic theory these nodes will have different labels they may be more uh, complex, they may be even more simplified if you don't use DPs yet and you still use NPs, that's fine as well. Uh, the point is that this tree adjoining grammar can be a very powerful formalism and a lot of the natural properties of islands come out of this theory. So a tree adjoining grammar, we don't need to talk about things like phase in order to get islands. Instead, it's just born out of this mathematical grammar. So I might do a video on that uh, but the next focus in this series is going to be on abstract algebra, so that fun part of the course, which is much more mathematically heavy. Uh, but nonetheless, it's important if you do want to do semantics. So I may revisit tree joining grammar. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll answer them the best that I can.